Pe, lumea s-a mai schimbat, totuși. Lumea s-a mai schimbat, nu pentru că sperăm, pentru că s-a schimbat. Chiar dacă nu speram, tot se schimba. Pentru că evoluția lucrurilor merge în așa direcție, încât atunci când ce nu corespunde evoluției domină, conștiința ia însă și ia măsuri. Conștiința ia însă și ia măsuri. Prin ea însăși. Asta, de-a lungul timpului, s-au văzut astfel de momente în care revine cineva pe pământ și, să spunem în franceză, rămâne la pondul al Adică să, să spune lucrurilor pe nume. Trăim o astfel de epocă. Trăim o astfel de epocă. Asta este sensul acestei întâlniri azi. Lucrurile merg într-o direcție bună. De ce merg într-o direcție bună? Pentru că nu se mai putea altfel. În momentul când ceea ce înseamnă distrugere, lipsă de moralitate, lipsă de bun simț, cum spune românul, lipsă de bun simț, când lucrurile astea încep să domine, echilibrul este stricat. Și atunci, în aspectul relativ al vieții, apare manifestarea Absolutului pentru a readuce la nivelul echilibrului viața pe Pământ. Asta se întâmplă. Așa că avem nu speranța, ci certitudine că ne îndreptăm spre o civilizație a spiritualității de care vorbeți. Acum, spiritualitatea este un cuvânt pe care îl folosim în stânga și în dreapta, cu mai multă sau mai puțină cunoaștere. Cred că înseamnă totalitate. Asta înseamnă. Spiritualitate înseamnă totalitate. Unde este? E pentru tine. Unde o găsim? În noi o găsim. Cum vi s-a spus, în toate tradițiile. Unde este Împărăția Lui Dumnezeu? În voi este. Căutați-o și toate celelalte vi se vor da pe deasupra. Ăsta este sensul trăirii noastre aici. Acum, până la acest sens, în alt să spunem, e nevoie să ne hrănim, e nevoie să ne îmbrăcăm, e nevoie să ne administrăm societatea, avem nevoie de lucruri practice. Cum ne organizăm viața pentru deplinirea acestor lucruri practice? Lăsăm spiritualitatea deocamdată. Deocamdată trebuie la masă să fie ceva de mâncat, să ne înțelegem cu familia, să ne înțelegem cu vecinii, să ne înțelegem noi între noi ca români. Cum facem asta? Asta este chestiunea. Lăsăm lucrurile celelalte până una alta. Nu? Într-un cuvânt, pentru a aborda elementele practice, consecințe ale dezvoltării conștiinței, trebuie ca modul în care gândim să fie mai eficace. Creierul pe care îl avem, această mașină pe care o avem, trebuie să funcționeze într-un mod mai bun, într-un într mod mai complet. Nu folosim această mașină la întregul, la întregul ei potențial. Folosim câteva procente. Domnul profesor o să poate să spună cu precizie cam cât folosim, dar se spune că poate 10% din ce putem folosi. Domnul profesor Nicolae Constantinescu, a cărui venire în sală o salut, spunea, potențialul nostru ca oameni, energia pe care o avem în noi, în acest rezervor fantastic, care îi prezentă în fiecare fărâmă din noi, 
Asta nu-l folosim. Cum să facem să folosim asta? Cum să facem să acționăm mai bine în ceea ce vrem să realizăm practic? Acesta este subiectul discuției care urmează. Jim Baniola este un mare specialist în management. Până la urmă, toți suntem la nivelul nostru confruntați cu această provocare, cum să ne organizăm mai bine viața, cum să, să ne conducem mai bine și să conducem mai bine și discuția pe care o va anima domnul, domnul Baniola este cum de fapt să fim oameni. El a scris o carte care în engleză este Becoming a Professional Human Being. Tradus în românește de profesie om. Și accentul e pus pe om. Accentul e pus pe profesie. De profesie om. Domnul Vanioa. is prepare students to lead. We prepare you to lead. We prepare you to lead. Which means we are preparing. Uh, yeah. Uh, it sounds better in Romanian. Sounds very good in English. What? From theoretical point of view. In practice, we have some. What the Transcendental Meditation Program does is prepare one to lead. It helps to prepare one to lead. It's one aspect. We will talk about all three aspects in my presentation. And uh, it's hard to follow Uh, spirituality, the biology of spirituality. But the biology of spirituality <coughs> creates the biology of the professional human being. And another word for that is leader. Mm -hmm. First, I want to take you to Dallas, Texas. I was on an airplane, sitting, sitting at the gate, And it was a hot day in Dallas, so there was no air conditioning for a few minutes, and uh, the plane is packed. And we are sitting there, and I hear somebody next to me say, isn't that the president of this airline? I look up, and I see, yes, it's Herb Kelleher, <laughs> who will see better in a few seconds. Um, no, that's worse. Okay, that's worse. Ah, perfect. So Herb Kelleher is the president of the airline and he's on our aircraft. The problem that he had was the door closed, the plane is packed, and he can't find a place to put his bag. So he's opening the overhead compartments looking for a place to put his bag. And everybody's looking at him and the plane gets absolutely quiet and the lady up close to him says, Aren't you Herb Kelleher, the president of the airline? Yes, he said yes. Isn't it strange the president of an airline doesn't have a place to put his bag? <laughs> and he's attempting to put his bag, and he turns to her and he says, Yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> Because the plane is full. He's happy. He sits down, the plane takes off, and we reach cruising altitude. And he gets up and puts an apron on and starts serving drinks to the passengers. You will not find this on Taro. <laughs> not yet. Not yet, or any other airline. Here's the president serving drinks. He comes to my aisle and I say, I'm a consultant, a leadership consultant, and you're doing a great job modeling what a leader should do. And he said, I'm just having fun. <laughs> He said, I've actually done every job that my associates do. I've loaded bags on busy days like Thanksgiving in the U.S. just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. I've washed the aircraft. I have done everything they do. Would you call him a leader in his organization? 
Yes. Da. Uh, it's the beginning of it. Ah, the beginning of it. That's correct. Uh, let me just tell you that this is the most profitable airline in the world. And so he has some special uh, techniques to uh, make money in this business. Is it, is it because that area is the most rich area in the, the States? Huh? No. Okay. He, he covers the whole of the United States. Oh, okay. And no international flights, just the whole of the U.S. Yeah. Their economy is doing badly right now. So, those Americans. Uh, you can't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Now let me take you to Austin, Texas, where I live. In Austin, a small company called Catapult hired me to speak to their customers. Their customers were IBM, Motorola, uh, other big companies, but they made software for them. So he was giving a gift of leadership to his customers. So I was sitting in the lobby waiting for the president, Sam Goodner, so that he could tell me what he would like me to, to uh, tell these customers and what he wanted them to think and do when they left. Okay, I'm waiting, I'm watching the receptionist. This woman is the receptionist in the front. And at one point she had two phones on her head like this. <laughs> and she's waiting on everyone and introducing people to other people, getting coffee. And uh, I, I watched her for 10 minutes and I knew I could not do her job for 10 minutes. No way. Beautiful smile beautiful voice, everything perfect. So when the president came, I said, as we're walking back to his office, who is the receptionist out front? And he said, you didn't talk to her, did you? And I said, no, good. Every time one of you people talk to her, I have to give her a raise. <laughs> so good. So he said, did you get her card? And I'm thinking a receptionist and a card. No, he said, hang on. He goes back out, he gets her card, brings her card to me. I look at it and it has her name and then, Director of First Impressions. <laughs> and he said, don't try to steal her because we pay her as director. <laughs> now, was Robin, her name, was she a leader in her organization? Yes. Who says no? Who said no? Ada, Ada. Oh, sorry. Okay, good. It wasn't new. It was da. Uh, our challenge is to create a culture, both at the university level, at any organizational level, at the country level, where we have leaders at all levels. We need leaders at all levels. If this is to be a leading institution, the majority of its people should be leaders, including students. Then we're known as a leading institution. That's our job. How do we create this in ourselves and then in others? Meet Abraham Lincoln, he was the 16th president of the United States, ranked the best president by historians. Serving from 1861 to 1865. Here he is. He looks a lot like me, actually. <laughs> Handsome guy. He was six foot four, so he was a lot taller than me. Here's what he said, no one is good enough to lead without consent. So the first thing we need is consent. Now you cannot lead without this particular asset. What is the one asset you need, and I know there are people here who have been in my class before, so you shut up. <laughs> You'd be quiet back there. 
What is the one asset? I want you to turn to the person next to you or your small group next to you and tell them the one asset that you need in order to become a leader. If you don't have it, you can't lead. This class before. <laughs> That's correct. You could think of everything you said. Trust, ethic, ethical, listens well, communicates well, uh, takes the risks when necessary. All those things will get you this one thing. Without that one thing, if you think you're leading, but no one is following, you're only taking a walk. <laughs> you heard John say this, huh? He says it a little differently, but your, your friend, John Maxwell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the whole thing that we need to do in life is get people to follow us. Ask parents, are you trying to get your children to follow you? It's not always easy. <laughs> this is, it isn't easy. We have to get employees to follow us. We have to get our boss to follow us. Students have to get their teacher to follow them and give them an A. Teachers have to get the students to follow them. I have to get you to follow me. It's a leader-follower dynamic that always is at work in life. So the important question isn't, how do I become a great leader? It's, how do I get people to follow me? How do I get people to follow me? You want to say something? Yeah. Important in life is to and this goes from simple things to the more complicated A professor conduce the students, but the students conduce the professor. Conduci copiii, dar și copiii te conduc. Ești timp. Așa este. Cine vrea să fie lider, dar nu este urmat de nimeni, nu este lider, ci doar se plimbă. Chestiunea importantă, întrebarea este cum devii lider? Cum devii un mare lider? So the first law and there are laws, and that's the science of leading, is the same everywhere. Whether you're in communist China, not so communist anymore, rich communist China, <laughs> or from Russia, or from Mongolia, where I just was, or from the United States, or from South America, you still have to get followers. That's a science. The art of how you get followers is different in different places and at different times with different people. So for instance in Mongolia the tradition is nomadic. It's nomadic which means they go from place to place to feed their yak or their, their sheep or their cows. It's a nomadic culture with animals moving from place to place. Nomadic means nomad. Yeah, yes. okay. Same thing. They're not mad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so what happens is, in the workplace, all of the people who are now in the city of Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, they used to be farmers moving around. Now they're PhDs, they're working in companies, they're doing... So what they've noticed at work they can only have short-term contracts with employees, one week at a time. <laughs> we do this, and then we stop, because we're moving. So in that culture, in order to get somebody to follow you, you have short-term contracts. Do you think they're independent or very dependent? They're very independent. So they're not good team players. So we give them a job and let them go and do it. They don't work well with others, they work well by themselves. 
in most cases. So that's the way they do it in their culture. In this culture, you use palinka. Anyway. <laughs> Why do we follow these leaders? And we'll add King Michael the first to this list. Why do we follow them? Turn to the person next to you and tell them why we would follow somebody like this. People like this. They inspire us. What else? Were they good at what they did? Yeah. <laughs> very good. They're very good at what they do, very competent, and therefore got followers. In fact, some of them got, one of them got so many followers, he had a Nobel Peace Prize in medicine. Right? Now, we may not be the world's best sculptor or playwright. We may not get a Nobel Peace Prize. We may not run a country like King Carol the First. And I'll tell you why we follow King Michael the First, the last king. He gave so much land to this university. Like a donation. A donation, correct. We like donations. And so he we follow him. We may not do any of those things. We may not run a country or a big company or a big organization, but our responsibility is to lead from where we are, at whatever level we're on. <coughs> at whatever team we're on, we take the lead when it's appropriate. Now, one thing that we have to learn here, I had to learn it, the term follower is not a derogatory term. It's not negative. It's in fact the essence of leading. Follower poate fi considerat ca peiorativ în alte limbi. Dar în română, urmaș, care înseamnă follower, nu este deloc peiorativ, din contră. Am urmaș. Cred că mai degrabă adept ar fi mai corect ca terminologie. Cred, cred adept, că termenul, urmaș, termenul mai, mai cuprinzător ar fi de adept, pentru că nu e unul care merge din obligație după cineva, ci îmbrăcișează ideile, îl susține. Urmaș, da, iarăși poate avea conotații, dar sensul mai de aproape, cred că e adept. Sau discipol. Discipol. Yeah, just uh, there was a better term. Yes, you could say follower in several words. Ah, several words. Got it. So a leader cannot lead without followers, so they're extremely important. Correct? They're important. Uh, we can't get anything done without followers. Uh, as I said yesterday, uh, I wrote a book. It took me five years to write the book and probably 50 people to help me write the book. Uh, somebody edited the uh, science. Somebody edited the grammar. Somebody edited my story development. Uh, somebody created the, the, the um, cover both in U.S. and now in Romania. Somebody had to do all that in, in the U.S. and here in Romania, Petro, my partner, had to do all that. I'm, a, I'm his godfather too, so he listens to me. <laughs> he follows me, yeah. Or else. I'm Italian too, so that makes a difference. When you say godfather, it means a lot. <laughs> Here's a leader test. In Saudi Arabia, the best example I have is I'm talking to a bunch of people running the airports and the military bases in Saudi Arabia, and one person after a couple of hours says, this is too simple, I already do it. Uh, I don't want to attend this class. Now the class was five days. This was just two hours. 
So I said, okay, bye-bye. And he said, no, no, I need your signature that I completed the course. I don't even know you. How can I give you a signature that you completed this course? And he said, well, you know, you, you could because I am a good leader. And I said, okay, I'll tell you what. Give me the names of the people who report to you. How many people report to you? He said, 22 engineers. Okay, give me their names and phone number. On the next break, which is three hours, in Saudi Arabia we have a three hour break because it's prayer time. So they have to go to pray and do other things and then they come back. Okay, he said, okay. I said, I will ask them some questions. Just give me 10 of the 22. If seven of them answer yes to my questions, I will sign your paper. Because it's important what the followers think, correct? They know. I don't know. They know. Do you agree? Yes. Oh, next 10 minutes, he's writing. Writing down, writing down. And then after 10 minutes, excuse me. I would like to lift. In Arabic? But I think would like to lift. Yes, that, oh, that's right. <laughs> you are correct. So he's writing, and then after 10 minutes, he, he raises his hand. Maybe the left hand. <laughs> and he says, excuse me, what are the questions you will ask? And I said, that's important. So the first question is, I will ask them off the top of your head, don't think much, is he competent? Yes or no? Now he's an engineer, so he is fine with that. Second question, does he care about you as a person? And his face went. <laughs> what? In Saudi Arabia, it's whoever has the title has the power. Correct? It's a monarchy. Not a democracy, monarchy. I think two years ago, women were allowed to vote for the first time in their history. So, anyway, his face, care? What's caring about them have to do with anything? If I tell them to do something, they should do it. And I said, well, nah, this is the question I'll ask. Does he care about you as a person? And lastly, do you trust him with your career? So he's thinking, hmm. You know I will stay until lunch. <laughs> and after five days, he's still there. Why? He doesn't want me to talk to them. They will tell me. He's not. If they're not following, he's not leading. He's managing, maybe, but not leading. And do, not doing a very good job of managing. He's dictating. That is better known as Ceausescu. <laughs> dictating. Uh-oh, look what happened to him. <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. So we have to be confident, and if we're competent but we don't care about the person, they don't trust us. We can be caring, but if we're not confident in what we're doing, they don't trust us. So they don't follow. What would be the difference between a follower and a subordinate? Trust. Correct. Trust. If I trust you, and we work together in a leader-follower dynamic, meaning I can lead sometimes, you lead sometimes. Then I follow you as, as your manager, I follow you. Or as a professor, I follow my student because great idea. That's a great idea. I, I follow that idea. And I follow you. So we move in and out of the role of leading and following. Easily. If you think following is not good, you won't do it. But that means when you try to lead, people won't follow you. So you follow when it's appropriate. Here's the problem with leadership development. This is just in the United States. In a research project, they interviewed 3,300 managers and, and human resource professionals. $48 billion was spent in one year. It's about the average of every year. Now it's even going up. 
they found that only 12 to 15 percent considered the training successful. That means 85 to 88 percent of the time traditional training was a failure. People were disappointed. You want to say something about that? Yes, I can say if you want to know. Trei mii trei sute de manageri și profesioniști în domeniul resurselor umane au fost intervievați și s-a văzut că din cele 48 de miliarde cheltuite anual, numai 12 la 15 la sută a fost considerat de util. Adică bani aruncați pe fereastră. Pentru formare. Cu 12-15% au fost bine. 88% au fost aruncați pe 40 billion dollars was wasted a year on training. This is, I call it corporate education. It's failing. In the United States, our formal education is not also making most people happy. We are down the list maybe 16th in the world as far as education goes. Romania is probably on top of us, probably somewhere up higher, I don't know. Unfortunately, they leave Romania out a lot and I, I get irritated because this is my second home. <laughs> so why are you leaving Romania? Where are they in this, in this uh, number? But we waste so much money because we leave a lot out. What do we leave out? What's the solution? The first solution, Felix Cagey told us. Then the professor followed up. You cannot leave out consciousness. This is the knower. You see, how often do you have to upgrade your computer? Every three years maybe? Four years, if you have the money, two years? Uh, so we have to upgrade our hardware continually because we have lesions on the cortex. We have lesions on the cortex from stress which cause us to act in ways we shouldn't. Immoral ways, says the professor. Unethical ways because of stress and lesions on the cortex. So we have to upgrade the hardware the TM program, which is practiced 20 minutes twice a day, closing the eyes, sitting comfortably, it is non-religious. It is non-religious. In religion, you pray to God, so you are talking to God. In TM, you close your eyes, do a technique, and you listen to God. <laughs> It's a listening technique, it's a simple technique, but non-religious. Anyone can practice it, it's a simple mental technique that affects the physiology in a profound way. So we want to rewire and restructure the brain with TM, and we can do that twice daily. We can increase intelligence and our learning ability through three ways, transcendence, coherence, and capacity, and more will be talked about this as the day goes on. But this is the thing that changes the knower. In most educational processes, we leave the knower out. The second thing that we have to consider, what's the process of learning and knowing? For understanding and retention, use advanced learning techniques. That means people have to be involved. We can't just talk at them. Telling is not training. Engage the learner. Use participative simulations where people do things and they learn from doing. Allow learners to teach what they know. Assist in changing perspectives. Use relevant and realistic tools to bring insight to action. This is the process of knowing. It used to be in school, the professor talked, you listen, shut up. Yeah, this has to change. It has to be interactive. They have to use their brain. 
Not only are you using yours, they have to use their brain. The last is the known. We have to upgrade our software continually. Upgrade the software. So all three areas are needed. Upgrading software, hardware, and the process of connecting them. We have to make use of the most up-to-date research-based, data-based knowledge available in whatever discipline we're teaching. So all three are there. The one missing is the knower. The student's capacity is not being increased. This is the value of TM. So back to leading and managing. Leading is more person to person. Managing is position to position. You know the difference? Building relationship, and I get people to follow me. On the other side, I call it management malpractice. Do you know what management malpractice is? Management malpractice could be treating people unfairly. Uh, favoring one person over another. I think I have a few examples. Leaders use relationship power then, not positional power. <coughs> Management malpractice sabotages the person trying to lead because they lose followership. How do I treat people? Am I using all three elements of the learning process? Do I let them take the lead when necessary and appropriate? So just some management malpractice. Now, while you're reading that, I need about 15 to 20 uh, volunteers to come up and do an exercise that everyone will view. I need 15 to 20 volunteers. Forty-five minutes. The best time was one minute twenty-six seconds. Oh, one minute twenty-six seconds. This uh, the, the the thing about the one minute twenty-six. They work together every day, so they had to work together anyway. But I've seen teams that work together every day, like the forty-five minutes. They just don't get along. What happens is, you notice at first, it's up high. What people are doing is, I wonder who's holding the pole up. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Who pushed the pole up there? <laughs> hey, hey, stupid. <laughs> then you see some of the short people. <laughs> we have some really dumb, tall people. <laughs> <laughs> this happens every day at work because, in organizations, because I'm looking at the other person's work instead of my own. Look how badly they're doing. It can't be me. No. The pole is so light that first somebody has to take the lead. If nobody leads, you have chaos. No one is listening to anyone else, correct? When somebody finally gets a, a, a Madalena was took the lead first, maybe we should do this, maybe increments, one, two, three, down, one, two, three, down. True, you cannot achieve anything all at once. It has to be small incremental goals. So just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit down. Somebody also have to say, maybe we should kneel down. If nobody says it, it's funny to watch people try to put it down without being it down. But somebody has to take the lead, and many different people will take the lead. Now, I had one friend down here, and somebody started yelling, Hey, you! Why are you holding it up? I'm not touching it! <laughs> the more we blame other people, the higher the pole goes. <laughs> Because everybody has to take control of their part of the pole and then work as a team to put it down. You notice it? 
So this shows the leader-follower dynamic. No leading, you have chaos because there's no following. So what were some of the key issues here? What were some of the key reasons why they didn't go down in one minute, 26 seconds? What are some reasons? Care au fost motivele pentru care nu s-a pus Regina jos pentru un minut și 26 de secunde? Lipsa de coordonare. Lack of coordination. What else? No leader. No leader. When there's no leader, we have chaos. Somebody has to take the lead. No, for the leader. Other has to agree to follow that idea. Too much leader. Too many leaders. See, if you have more than one person trying to lead at once, that is the power's left out. That's the main trouble we're going to have. One leader at a time doesn't have to be the same leader every time. No, it should be the same leader all the time. What else? Lack of goal. Lack of a goal because see, we we knew we we're supposed to put it on the floor, but once we start, some people, even, some teams even get chairs and go higher <laughs> because they forget what was the goal anyway. We went and we started going up. <laughs> also, there's change. Did you notice the change? How people handle change? So first we're here. And in two seconds, <laughs> some people laughing. <laughs> Other people. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Somebody asked me. I know there's some people in here, some moles. <laughs> They're cheating. They're holding it up on purpose. Even at work or in the classroom, we think they're doing it on purpose. They're not doing it on purpose. Nobody, before they come to work in the morning, they're looking, you know, today I'm going to screw everybody up. I'm going to make everybody unsuccessful. So you see the dynamic of leading and following and, and a team. This is a, the best example I have of it. I use it in every leadership class to show people. Uh, if it's a team that work together, I said, let's see how you work together. The one minute, 26 seconds, very good. But in their company, they were the people who moved delicate furniture within companies. They were one minute, 26. The president, vice presidents, and all the top people took nine minutes. <laughs> so for the rest of the conference, they were going, nine minutes. <laughs> one minute, 26. <laughs> We should be paid more than you. <laughs> In England, Dr. Fieldman found that when employees were working for a boss they disliked, they had significantly higher blood pressure. Boss-induced hypertension could increase the risk of heart attack, and heart disease by one-sixth, and the risk of stroke by 33%. Here's the mind-body application now. When we're in a team, whatever it is, suppose the students think the professor is not good and they don't like the way they're treated by the professor, they could have higher stress which could give higher blood pressure. Mm -hmm. There's a physiology of morality, says the professor, but there's a physiology of success. This is what I call a professional human being. You have to have the physiology of success, the mind-body connection. In Sweden, poor management increases both the amount of sick leave and creates a greater risk of heart attack. All around the world, they're finding, finding the same thing. Companies are losing money because people don't show up. In a Gallup study, there's, the, there's an average of 50% less productive if they're poorly managed and 44% less profitable. Now we're talking about money. So how we treat each other in the workplace, the leader and follower dynamic, is very important for profitability and productivity. I should say it the other way around, productivity and profitability. Titles do not confer the ability to lead. See, no one had a title here. But they got people to follow them. 
with an idea and the trust. Oh, you have confidence? You're not yelling at me. See, people who yell at adults, they go like this. Somebody yells at you and you go, oh yeah? <laughs> you go away from the goal. You sabotage the person trying to lead. Who was it on you were at the end, right over here? People were yelling at you, and you're like, I'm not even touching it. <laughs> Don't yell at me. And if you yell at me again, I'm going to push it way up. <laughs> we feel this way as adults. So the law number two, people don't follow titles. They follow courage, they follow competence, they follow caring, they follow trust, worthy people. Your organization will never be what you and your people are not. It can only be what your people are, very simple. So we want fully developed leaders as much as possible. In a democracy, we want a majority. World Health Organization sees more unhealthy workers predicting diabetes death to rise 50% in the next 10 years. And global obesity, especially in the US, eating too much. Romanians don't eat too much. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Companies can save millions by caring for their workers. British Telecom is an example. They took initiatives to care for their employees, and there was a 33% decline in work, sick worker sick leave, and they saved $48 million annually just caring for people. Here's a leading school here in Bucharest. Everybody, anybody heard of this, Olga School? They have like five or six of them. They're known as a leading institution. There they are with a handsome guy right here in the uh -huh. middle. Do you see how happy I am with all these ladies? I'm a happy man there. Most of these teachers and administrators have to be leading, have to be leaders, in order for the organization to be considered a leading organization. Does that make sense? We have to empower everybody to take the lead. Not everybody can manage. Managing, being a manager is a profession. Not everybody can be a good manager. Everybody can be a good leader from whatever position they are in. Does that make sense? No. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example, probably the best for you. Are you a, are you a football fan? No. Oh, this would be bad for you then. <laughs> In sports, we think every great player will make a great coach. So they made Haji a coach. This was a mistake. <laughs> He's a great player, not a great coach. We do it all the time in the workplace. We make great players, great doers, managers. It's not always correct then that person hates their job and they pass it on to the employees. Or a great professor is made an administrator and he or she just wants back in the classroom. Right? You know some people like this, they're made an administrator, they don't want to manage, they want to teach. They want to do. I want to do it. So, leadership equation. Leader plus followers equals a power called leadership. It's a power. Another word for leadership, partnership. Leaders and followers have to partner to get this pulled down. If we disagree with each other, we don't partner, we don't work together, we don't have the leader-follower dynamic, the poll stays up. The longer we choose not to partner, the longer the poll stays up. Meaning, we don't achieve our goal. Put the poll on the floor. Leadership is then a field of interaction, a relationship between leader, leaders and followers. So what does that have to do with us? There's an internal dimension of leading. The way we process information creates the act of leading. It's about the brain. 
It's about this, I think Dr. KG said, it modulates consciousness. Was that the word you used, Felix? It modulates. The brain helps us modulate our awareness, our consciousness of everything. The ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage, says Ari de Goose from Royal Dutch Shell, one of my clients. That means learning? Does that involve the brain? Absolutely. So there's this mind-body business connection. Our capacity to change, adapt, and unlearn, and relearn is due to the brain the condition of the processor of information. All knowledge and information has to be understood, assimilated, and used by this brain. Every experience changes the brain. I mentioned that yesterday from my research, absolutely true. Uh, Dr. Fred Travis's research on the brain, every, he says the brain is not a rock, it's a river, continuously changing. Transcendental meditation, it allows for this unique state of consciousness. That's pure potentiality. It allows for coherence in the brain. It transforms the cortex and has more global integration of the entire brain. And lastly, it continually expands capacity. We become more and more capable. More and more capacity is there for us. So the primary purpose, total brain functioning and using our full capacity. We've talked about this for centuries. How do we use full potential? How do we become self-actualized? Remember that pyramid? Self-actualization is at the top. The fact is that TM allows us in many different ways to have a better brain, to have higher intellectual performance, scientifically speaking, not my, yes, my experience and your experience of this 75-year-old professor. Tell me about his using his brain, clear, energetic, didn't waste a second. Talk so fast, I couldn't understand, I had to ask. <laughs> TM does not replace anything. It doesn't replace exercise or diet or religion or prayer. It only adds to everything. It doesn't replace anything. Leadership development has a lot of different characteristics which are touched on by meditation. And here's, what it, here's how it touches on it. It's called increased self-actualization. What they did is took 42 independent research results and found that, the, it's meta-analyses it's called, and the TM program was found to be four times as effective as other meditation and relaxation procedures in increasing self-actualization. Another word for self-actualization can be enlightenment. Enlightenment means being able to use the most valuable qualities in human life available to you. It means being able to lead from where you are. It allows us to use full potential, and this is scientifically based. It's the first scientifically based piece of information that tells us you can actually increase your intelligence, your capacity in many different ways. This is what we want from every individual in our institution, our school, our corporation, our organization, whatever it might be. I'm going to stop there and take some questions and then we will continue. Some questions. What is this? Why is soul missing? Because uh, soul is I would say it's the best way to take leadership. Absolutely right. 
And uh, the professor was talking about spirituality. Mm -hmm. So he took the soul, I took the mind and the body. He took the soul. See, another word for consciousness could be soul. See, spirituality, spirit means the non-material material from which everything in the universe is made. The non-material spirit. It's the non-material material from which all other material is made. I will let you talk about that. You see, so I can't talk about everything. He okay. talked about the soul, spirituality, the physiology of morality is the soul. The physiology of morality. He will talk about what you want to talk about. What's the essence of all of this? What's the essence? I let the experts talk about this. Okay. Is it fair? Yeah. Yeah. So you are absolutely right. Without soul, what is that? Nothing. And you could feel his soul, the passion that he has. You could feel Nicholas's passion. It's the soul coming out. And we want everybody to show that enthusiasm, which when you break up the word, it's the soul showing itself. Good, I saw another. Yes, sir. How do you gap the bridge between technological West and spiritual East of our world? Wow. Dr. KG was talking about the ancient techniques. Six, TM is 6,000 years old. It comes from the East can be practiced and verified scientifically by the West. Without the West, I wouldn't have started TM unless, wow, I heard of 357 published results on this technique. See, usually when somebody says meditation, you just have to take for granted that they're telling you the truth. Does it work? Oh, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, but what's the science on it? I don't have any. <laughs> I don't want it then. See, I want scientific verification. So this is a great marriage of 6,000-year-old technology and Western science saying, okay, let's study this thing in 357 different ways. And they're published and peer-reviewed. Uh, when a study is not published and peer-reviewed, I have a question about it. It's good, it's okay. But let's do it some more times and then put it up to experts to get peer-reviewed and published in a, uh, in a document that is you know, respected around the world. Now you're talking, that's what this practice is. It does marry the two. Answer your question? Good. Great question. More, yes? Creativity? Yeah. Creativity is like the first <clears throat> blossoming of a thought. And if we in TM have the experience of finer and finer levels of the mind, then we can experience where the thought first arises. And this is the most creative place. So for instance, if I say, well, what's his name? And you say, Name, 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 name. Oh, I can't remember the name. Oh. And you fight with it. And then, oh, wait a minute, I gotta concentrate. Name, 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 name. You will not remember that name. Why? Because you're at the surface level. But as soon as you relax off of it, you go to this creative spot. And in that creative spot, the name comes effortlessly. This is creation, where the creativity begins. And so. This practice allows for that experience of that creative level. That's why I think it's it's first in the in the research. Questions? You know everything. It's amazing. You know everything. I was so clear. We take a break now. Take a break. Just. Da? Da, sau uite, da? Ce se întâmplă în continuare?